the Longhorns stand 6 and 0, oh, ranked number 2 in the BCS standings. They also are enjoying one of the longest winning streaks in the country. 13 in a row. Lance Armstrong, one of the honorary captains here today, meeting at midfield with our referee, Tom Walker. As the co-captains exchange greetings and Lance shakes the hand of one and all at midfield. A sellout crowd greets the horn. Quarterback. They really are, Brent. And you know, they're confident players, and they've earned their confidence with their production on the football field. That's what you do. You can't give a guy confidence. You have to earn it. And they are productive, comfortable football players. Now, how do you win this football game? Texas has a number of ways to win it. They got athletes all over the field. Texas Tech has one way to win this football game. Throw it. But they've got a puncher's chance because when you do something really well, like Tech does, you can win a game. You would expect this from a gunslinger. Mike Leach, the coach of Texas Tech, they won the toss. They did not defer. They want the ball. They want to go on the offensive to begin this game. Amendola and Woods are back deep. And the ball is being put on the tee by Greg Johnson, number 97. He's the junior from Lilburn, Georgia. Texas will do defensively. You know, if there's an old saying, yards don't win football games, but for Texas Tech, they must get yards, and to do that, they have to make first downs. Third down is going to be critical. They had an off game against Nebraska. Texas, you know, as fancy as this offense is, it still comes down to tackling, and when they catch those passes, getting that guy with small yards after catch. We'll be watching that all football game. Senior quarterback Cody Hodges, number 10, from Horford, Texas. Brings the Red Raiders to the line, and look at that wide split. They spread the field out with their offensive line, keeping the defense spread out as well. First down pass incomplete. So the Red Raiders are in second and ten, and Cody Hodges has fabulous numbers this year, averaging better than 400 yards a game. Put up 643 a week ago. Here are his playmakers. Torian Henderson has got more passes than any running back in college football history. The linebackers, Aaron Harris, a Butkus finalist, and that secondary, which will be under fire from the beginning of the game throughout the afternoon. In a contest that could last well beyond four hours. Second down and ten. Henderson is stuffed. Could not even get back to the line of scrimmage as Robinson met him. The offensive line E.J. Whitley has moved over to center today and Kagan's draws a start at left guard. That's a late change against this defensive front for the Longhorns and of course they were ready. Oakham right, Robison, Crowder a good bunch. Third down and ten. The Red Raiders unable to gain a yard so far. There's a penalty on the play. There is a penalty on the snap. It was caught at the sideline, but there is a penalty flag thrown by the line judge on the snap. And here is Tom Walker. He replaced the injured Walter Davenport, and we hope that uh, Walter is recuperating. He suffered a wrist injury last week. Both line judges, both sides of the field, threw their flag on that. Field formation. Against the offense. Not enough on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat third down. A heavily penalized team, Texas Tech is. 
And they draw the first yellow flag. Yeah, and today. it's such a big play because it was caught on the sideline, which keeps Vince Young on the sideline. So each one of those plays, those self-inflicted wounds against a hot offense like Vince Young is running, really comes back and adds up as the game goes on. Third and 15. Good protection. Couldn't find an open receiver and now sprints to the right. And Texas Tech is forced to punt. He was met by Robert Killebrew, a linebacker who really impressed you in practice. He really did, Brent. This guy is really coming on. I asked defensive coordinator Gene Chiswick, what player has come on the most since we saw him at Ohio State? And he pointed right to number 40 and said he is an intense football player. And Brent, we are out of practice. He is in the game. That boy, that, that kid wants to be a great football player. Alex Reyes, Honey, Sean Juan Cosby, set to return. Three protectors. The Gunners are giving a lot of room to come down. Short. Excellent field position. Working in Red Raider territory. About 43, 44 yards away. And now what about the Longhorns game plan here, Gary? Well, as much headlines as Vince Young gets, and he deserves them all, the key to this Texas attack is that they're balanced. At receiver, they got five guys that can hurt you, a tight end, a running back, and of course, Vince can do it with his legs, and he's proven with his arm, and just the flip side for Texas Tech. They got to find a way to get off the field, whether by three and out or by turnovers. One way or another, they've got to get off the field. Texas comes out in a power eye with Selvin Young at tailback. The junior gets the game's first handoff. Breaks free. 35. Stretching for a first down and 11-yard run. Well, Selvin Young has had to share those backfield handoffs with the emerging running back, uh, Jamal, Jamal Charles, but you can see Selvin Young, when he's healthy and he's in shape, which he is now, is a threat. And if you talk to the Texas coaches, they say he's playing better without the ball than with it. That means he's picking up blitzes and running his assignments perfectly. Leaving Hall in as the fullback to lead the way. A power attack to start this game to the 28-yard line. Vince Young, the dual threat quarterback. Note the 400 at 13 yards rushing and he is 23 and 2 as a starter here are his playmakers now we mentioned young he's carried it and freshman jamal charles will see a lot of action here today the linebackers will have their hands full because texas is showing a power attack and the secondary has to be ready for when vince puts it in the air as he did last week young searching for daylight that time and not nearly as successful as meeks makes the stop the offensive line is a dandy. Especially note the tackles. Justin Blaylock, the junior on the right. Jonathan Scott from Dallas over on the left. It's a veteran group. They've been together all season. This defensive line will have its hands full here today. Second and eight for Vince. Draw Blake. end wide open on the play and just overthrew David Thomas who stands 6-3 he talked to people trying to defense Vince Young before it was okay we got to stop this guy running and then he can do a lot of things on broken plays kind of tough to defense but now he's turned it into a pocket passer there's no real way to stop this guy you have to play sound defense that's the only way to do it Billy Pittman Checks in a wide receiver. He's in the slot to the right for Young. Obvious passing situation. Young on third and eight is in the shotgun. Veteran offensive line gives him time. Young just puts it down, trying to get the first down. Will not. 
Mac Brown with a decision to make. Does he go for the field goal here? Doesn't even hesitate. Out comes the kicking unit right now. Nazi Rudin makes the stop for the Red Raiders on that play. And it will be fourth down and trotting out is David Pino. He's the senior from Wichita Falls, Texas. Well, the uh, overthrow by Vince Young really set up the uh, chains in Tech's favor. You can see this Tech defense much quicker than you remember seeing them a lot. They are really run to the ball well. Matt Nordgren, the backup quarterback, will put it down. The snapper, Nick Schroeder, he's a senior from the Woodlands. That's just nearby Houston. This will be a 40-yard attempt for Pino. Got it. So after the short punt, the Horns take advantage of good field position, but the Red Raiders receive a lift because they did not yield a touchdown. 45 points a game is pretty good, but consider the Texas Tech average is 53 a game, and they're number one. So everybody thought we were going to have a high fly and high scoring game still could develop that way. But right now, it is the defense for Texas that has stalled the Red Raiders in two series. And here comes Vince Young and the Horns. And Vince right away is back there in the gun. And there's the handoff to the youngster. We told you Jamal Charles would see a lot of action today. He's run out of the far sideline by Meeks. Well, we asked Vince, what about the defenses? What are they trying to do to trick you a little bit, Vince? Yeah, I'm seeing a whole lot. They they throwing so much, man. It's, it's just real crazy to seeing what they trying to do or what they doing in the secondary. But it's just me getting my guys out the huddle and, and getting out there and getting my pre-snap reads helping me out a whole lot. A fierce competitor and a leader. Those two things always come through when you talk to the Texas coaching staff. He really enjoys playing football. He'll keep it himself, and there's that option look, and then the pitch to the freshman. And the Red Raiders met it very, very well at the point of attack. Brinkley, number 41, delivered a solid blow. You watch that Texas Tech defense. They do not blitz a lot. In fact, when you talk to the Texas coaches, they're the least blitzing team they've faced. They blitz only about 15% of the time. Vince Young smartly gets rid of that ball. He does not want to take a lot of punishment in a football game the way he's throwing it. But I tell you, I, I, I really am impressed with the way Texas, Texas Tech's linebackers flow to the football. They all run very, very well. Give me an idea. Texas blitzes 43% just to follow up on what... Yeah. Uh, on what Gary told you as they go ahead for the uh, the first down on that running play and uh, they had they had charted all of the Red Raiders defensive plays and they came out to 12 percent versus Texas at 43 percent that's a big difference yeah, that is. and 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 40 percent and then the, the norm in the whole of the Big 12 they told us what 25 to 35 percent is exactly. the norm in the Big 12 very interesting you get the stats within the stats and the strategy by different teams now you can see that base defense of the Red Raiders sitting there in that fourth three. <laughs> and flanker screen short of the first down reached the 40 yard line and Saldi who has impressed you uh, makes a stop well throw is to Brian Carter the senior also for the can't, Woodlands and that's a first down. Yeah, you can't stop that you just can't stop that type of precision with that gift of an athlete out there at Vince Young. How about Bill Parcells he once was an assistant coach with the Texas Tech Red Raiders. You got the Dallas Cowboys one of those teams you have to think about uh, when you look down the road to January to the NFC championship game first down and ten. There's the fake by Young stands tall he's six five picked off intercepted. And a straight shot for Chris Parker. The first big turnover and break. Chris Parker picks off Vince Young's pass, which was intended for Lima Swede. Texas and Vince Young has been throwing a lot of out routes. And I think this time Texas Tech gambled on this one. Parker just squatted. It was a good throw. Ball's out to the outside, and look at that. When you have a corner that can eat up a route that well, that's either a bad pass route by your wide receiver or a corner that's squatting, guessing on the play. And now inside of seven minutes in the opening quarter, the Red Raiders are a yard away from the red zone. 
Cody Hodges looking for his first completion of the day. He's 0 for 4. Getting the spot marked, you can see on the far side. Up under center, Henderson bangs into the right. Reaches the 16-yard line, and Michael Griffin, one of the Griffin twins, makes the stop. We check in down below with Jack. And uh, what did Mike Leach tell the offense, Jack? I'm beginning to think he might be a prophet, Brent, because when they came off the field, he gathered them all around, and Mike Leach said, look, stay focused. Don't get discouraged. And then he went to walk away and turned back and says, our defense will get it back for us. Whoa. <laughs> so there it is, 79% touchdowns. 31 of 39 on trips into the red zone. Second down from that zone right now. Hicks has got it. First down. Hicks inside the 10-yard line. That's why it's so tough to blitz late because of those screen plays. Now, you know, Brent, those coaches, the NFL guys got those big playlists. Look at Mike Leach's playlist. It's a little titty handkerchief, you know? I mean, he's got like... You can see those NFL guys, they've got them, they tuck them in their pants and they fold them over five times. He's got a little teeny thing. He just, he, only he knows what's going on, the mad scientist. Mad Mike over there on the far side with a first and goal, trailing by a field goal. Still wide splits. Fires, complete. Put it down, but was he down on the ground? It's being marked by the official on the field. It seemed to come out late. Robert Johnson, the receiver that time, the converted quarterback. Now take another look at this and see if we need instant replay to step in here on this. A little bunch route. Johnson catches the ball. Goes down with his left knee, reaches forward, and then the ball pops through. I think that's a correct call yeah. so far. <laughs> Whitley over the ball, centering today to Hodges. Henderson for the touchdown. Texas Tech leads it. Henderson with 272 career receptions. He's comfortable with the ball in the air and catching it. You see a little rub off. Two receivers go inside, rub off. He sees the outside man come. He just dump it off, and Henderson gets into the end zone for first touchdown of the football game. Jalika tacks on the extra point. The interception sets it up. The Red Raiders, opportunists, put the ball in their star running back's hands, and he does the rest. 7-3 Red Raiders. Everyone asks me, why don't you just blitz these guys? You can see what happens when you try to come from the secondary and blitz them. You've got plays that can attack it. This time, Texas Gambles sends two safeties, a little easy play, the play behind the play. When you just want to attack this wide split, you have to be ready for the screens. Chalika, the ball on the tee to kick it off for the Red Raiders. Lamont's Taylor is back deep with Cosby. Taylor from the 10. Cuts at the hash. 35. 40. The freshman and Selvin Young have been exchanging at that running back spot. Back with the, the veteran coming off the knee injury and running hard across midfield. Leave him about second down and four or three pending the spot. Just after 3 o'clock here in Austin, Texas. Beautiful, beautiful day for football. Gary and Jack, I'm Brent. Nice to have you along with us. Battle of the Unbeatens. A couple of those teams that are making a spirited run for the Roses now. The BCS Championship, of course, will be out in Pasadena. Selvin Young picks his way first down. Selvin Young running very well here today. Dawson, Deontay Dawson. 
Olympic number 96 there on the stop. Now 22 remember, coming off whoop. major knee surgery, Gary. Yes, uh, every time Vince Young hands that ball off, that's the zone read play from the shotgun. He could have kept that ball and ran, so he ultimately he really blocks a player every time he hands that ball off because the end man has to be ready for him to pull it down and run. Back to the gun again on this first down, Red Raider territory. Play fake this time, puts it down, looking for the receiver, and incomplete. Batted down by big number 84, Cherry. Got a big paw on that, but the pressure was applied by 41, Brinkley. Brinkley gets into Vince Young. Remember Vince Young against Ohio State when he threw that ball when he was wrapped up? This is going to happen again. Brinkley gets him, picks him up, and kind of turkey jones him like they did to Terry Bradshaw. Now that could have been called unnecessary, but in Brinkley's defense, hey, I don't know if he's got the ball or not. This is a big dude I'm trying to bring down. Second down and 10. Vince Young going to Taylor deep. Juggled, intercepted by the Red Raiders. In the end zone. Doesn't know if he has to come out. He's playing keep away, and down he goes at the two-yard line. He didn't, Nazi Rudin didn't know exactly where he was, whether or not he had to keep coming or take a knee and bring it out on the 20-yard line. And there is a penalty flag, however, back at the line of scrimmage on the 45. Ineligible receiver, number 16 on the offense. That's decline. That's only decline. Red Raider First football. Second. Wonderful job this time by the free safety right here that reads this play and gets back. And that's why the ball is tapped up on the play. He reads it, watch him turn around. I think it's Slay number three. Yes, Dwayne Slay, the big hitter, gets in the middle of it. Now, you got to keep your wits about you. Keep your wits. You're not out. You're not out. Now, you don't know if you're out or not, so you got to go. A turnover, but first and go first and out on the first yard line. Number 36, Huffman. Could have helped out in this situation. And kept He's him in the, the one who should yes. have said, take yeah. a knee, take a knee, get down. Regardless, it's a second turnover by Vince Young. Ball is on the two-yard line, and Cody Hodges will come up. Tight splits under center. Great turnover there by Texas Tech. Toss to Henderson. To the four-yard line, where it is second down. The goal here for the Longhorn defense, don't give up a first down. And of course, coming up later, we'll have the Chevrolet players of the game, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Most situations, if you're a quarterback back with Vince Young there throwing that post, you expect at least to get an incompletion out of that play. That was a tremendous play by the Tech secondary. Anderson's to the right of the quarterback. Yeah, goal line. Look at those splits on the four-yard line. Whitley stays at center. There's a fake. Taking off. Just gets it off. Incomplete. Boy, Huff did Michael Huff defense. close on that play? He really closed on that play. You could see the athletic ability of say, number seven, safety Michael Huff. That ball should have been completed. Most teams, most passes... When Cody Hodges throws one like that, that's a completion, but not against these athletes today. Need eight yards. Third down. Hodges is three of eight for the game and does have the one touchdown pass to Henderson. Firing incomplete. Missed Hicks. And the Red Raiders are forced to punt, so the heat is on. Alex Reyes punting again. Just a bit of disruption to the timing of the pass offense there. A jam downfield just took that communication, that, you know, the receiver quarterback communication. It's so easy sometimes just to step off, and that's what happens. Reyes will be standing near the end line in the end zone. He'll be all the way back. Great view from behind him. Cosby standing across the midfield at the 48-yard line of the Red Raiders. He waits the return. You can see the three protectors there. Behind the rush. Gets it off. 
Another short field for the Longhorns. Cosby up the middle. Explodes. Stumbling down at the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal. There is a penalty flag thrown back on the goal line. And the way Texas is acting, they're going to have the ball first and goal. Boy, was that an explosion by Cosby, one of the fastest Texas players. Baseball players really coming on now. You saw that quickness. First and goal for the Longhorns. You see Quan right here, he catches his ball and takes it north-south. Watch this, one step and bang, right up there. There's the acceleration, gets into the open field right now, and just the tip of the ankle. So now Vince Young, who has thrown an interception in each of his last two possessions, brings the offense out. They'll show that fullback again. And Jamal Charles. Remember, they also have Big Henry Melton over here on the sideline. Charles, short of the five-yard line. Second down and goal for Young. Incomplete, and again, he had a wide open receiver. Remember, he overthrew his tight end early in the game, a couple of interceptions, and a penalty flag back at the goal line. Probably will be a pick. It's one of those rub offs, or it'll be holding in the secondary. One of the two. It has to be one of those two. Well, here it is. Holding back there, and it was half the, the defense. distance. That's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Doesn't seem like Vince Young kind of talking to his receivers like I expected you to go flatter there. I thought you were going to go more quicker out of your break. They don't seem to be in sync yet. Here comes big Henry Melton. And we do mean big. Number 37 is 270 pounds of freshman running back. And someday folks expect to see him lined up at defensive end. But for the time being, he'll be the short Goal line fella down here behind the fullback. Here he comes. Battling toward the goal line. It'll be spotted just inside the one yard line. We check in. Uh, Jack, that is one big dude down there, and he's going to be switched into the defensive end. Yeah, Britton, you'd think it's 6'3, 276. Well, he's a running back. He's opened all sorts of names. They've tried Hemi Train, they've tried Mack Truck, but Vince Young probably gave him the best name. First, he wanted to call him the Melton Mule, and then he settled on Big Beef Jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Big Beef Jerky is set to go here again, Jack. Touchdown. Texas regains the lead. Don't you move me to defensive end just yet, Coach Mack. I want to keep on run with the football. <laughs> mistake by Texas Tech after the interception really came back and cost, cost them and bit them on that one. Indeed, and uh, David Pino with Nordgren, the holder. Schrader's the sniper. Ten seven. Just power on power. Up front power, in behind power. And we'll take a break in Austin. But today here in Austin, Texas Tech is way under its average. 67 total yards in that first quarter against this Longhorn defense. Gene Chizik, the one-time defensive coordinator at Auburn, Go! calling the shots. Here is Henderson on a flare. And gets to the outside on Brown, close to a uh, close to a first down. So, Mr. Danielson, what do you make of this? Do we give the defense all the credit in the world, or are the offense is a little tight in this game? Well, I, I think there's a lot riding on this football game, and, and the skill players, the two quarterbacks, are struggling a little bit. But the most underpublicized part of this football game that's better than I thought: Texas Tech's speed on defense. The Tech defense can run. They play very solid, and they look at the quarterback. They're very, very good getting to the ball. 
Second down and three after the seven yard gain. Fake the end around. Throw underneath to Henderson. Crosses the 40 for a first down. Killebrew, one of the three defenders there on top of Henderson, but the chains move for the Red Raiders. Comes out late. Hit on the release. Incomplete. There's a penalty flag down at the 45 yard line, which could be holding. It was a first down pass. Well, it just looked like Cody had eyes in his back that time, a clock to just know how long to hold it. Sideline warning. Texas sideline. First warning of the game. Result of play. First down. Okay, we've got that over with. Yeah, and, and they called it a completed pass, too. Absolutely. <laughs> I am surprised that he threw the ball to I know, get I, it off. I, I, you could almost feel the sack coming, couldn't you, on that play? Absolutely. And, yet, and that's what it is. When you're going to play in this offense, you have to have a quick release. Small little quarterbacks, the last three have been almost mirror images. Quick release. Get rid of it quickly. Sets a screen. Here comes Henderson. He's driven out of bounds on the far side by Aaron Harris. The, out of Mesquite, the, Texas outstanding linebacker. The, the, the screen yardage goes to the quarterback as passing yards. We all know that. But in the Tech offense, this is their running game. This is what controls the pass rush, and this gets the ball into the hands of your skilled player, Henderson. You can see Mike Leach has come out with this series saying, we've got to establish our running back. Needing two for the first down. Ball's inside the Longhorn 40. First down, and they cross the 30-yard line, and that's a pass that only the receiver is able to catch. It was thrown to Robert Johnson, recruited as a, uh, as a quarterback. He's out of America's Georgia. He played at junior college. Uh, he was the top rated JC quarterback in the country and they have uh, converted him and for a time he, he was not too happy about it but now uh, some of his friends have told him that his future as a football player lies in being a wide receiver and he's one of the more dangerous ones on the Red Raider offense. You can see the offensive lineman turn around and call the protection. They moved the back to the other side because they wanted help to the other side. That one bounces. Incomplete. And Huff, you know, you just saw him on the coverage there, and uh, he's got some inside access. Uh, he took a long look at Cody Hodges in the Red Raider attack. Here's what he saw. His first receiver went open, so he looked for the second and third, and, I mean, he just made a great pass in the back of the end zone, and he scored. He's just great with his feet, and he, he has a quick release, and he knows where he's going with the ball. And he's up against that quick release right now, and they decide to hand it off, and Henderson battles his way back across the 30-yard the line. Good call by Chiswick that time, defensive coordinator. Guessing with Mike Leach, he called that safety blitz right into the draw play that time. Perfect call at the perfect time. That was a, a scheme that Tech could not handle that time. He down, third down, and it's third and long, exactly where Texas wants him. Hodges trying to get somebody to clear and can't. And have to keep it himself. Keeps on battling for a first down. Instead of stepping out of bounds, he saw that he was close enough to charge for a first down and a 13-yard gain. He's not noted as a no. dangerous runner. He was a high school decent runner, but uh, you don't do that a lot here. Watch Cedric Griffin, number eight. I think he felt that Cody was going to go out of bounds, and he pulls off right there down the sideline. And look at he kind of just stops and lets him go by, and that's a huge play down the sideline by Cody. On a third and 11, wow, wow. 13 yards. Nobody covered him. But to the out, there's a penalty on this play. This one's coming back. I wonder if that's an illegal formation. That thing was called right away. Texas missed a line that time. Maybe Texas Tech did also. 
yellow flu on both sides. They had 12 men on the field, Texas, did they? Four and four and four. That looks like 12. Four, four and four. That looks like 12 to me. Illegal shift on the offense. One, two, three, four. Illegal five, participation. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Texas defense. has 12, 12 men, men on the, on the field, field unless somebody the ran out after the play. Billy's offset. Repeat first down. Yep, replay first down. Look at that. Illegal shift and 12 men on the field. Cody Hodges, Brent, saw that Texas had too many men on the field and quick snapped it. Unfortunately, they weren't in an illegal formation when he did it. So it is first and 10. The ball resting on the 17-yard line. Complete and his receiver was well covered that time. Anyway, number 27, Michael Griffin, was all over the intended receiver that time. Let's go down to Jack. Well, Brent, like all of us, Cody Hodges has to do a couple of things to try and stay focused. He does what you, me, and Gary do. He makes notes to himself. He's done it all through his career playing football. But one of the things he carried to the extreme when he was competing for the starting job for the Red Raiders, he wrote the note on his hand. It simply said, compete. Indeed, second down and 10 now for Cody. He's 9 of 17. Now he's 10 of 18, but this won't get much to the 15-yard line. All right, Gary and uh, Jack can participate. Here's, here's a question for you about young Mr. Hodges. Herford, Texas, okay? Herford High School. What's their nickname? <laughs> the steers. No, but you're, you're, you're in the neighborhood. The longhorns. The longhorns. The longhorns. Uh, Jack, what do you think it is? I think it's got to be the longhorns. Oh, you're both long. The Hereford white faces. <laughs> Come on now, think about the I last Hereford you saw. Yeah. Huh? Mm. <laughs> Boy, can't take an off day around here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Third down. Flaring to the end zone. Incomplete. Out of bounds is the ruling on oh, that a... far side, but it looks like a beautifully thrown ball to Jared Hicks. Jared Hicks ran a beautiful route, too, on this one. He came inside, attacked the defender. The ball's thrown to a spot outside of the field, and Hicks catches it with one hand, but does... He didn't caught it with one it hand, didn't have control, yeah, right? didn't control as he slid out of bounds, but that was a beautiful play, beautiful. wasn't it? Got that one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Hodges read it exactly right. Went to the right guy and threw it maybe a foot too far. Alex Reyes a hole for Trelika, 32-yarder. Got it. We're deadlocked at 10. Wasn't pretty, but it counts three points. Unbeaten Texas Tech and unbeaten Texas. Battle of the Texas Titans, and we're deadlocked at 10. Bench Young and the Longhorns and the Attawak stat there. Note the rushing yards. Who would have thought Cody Hodges would have as many rushing yards as Vince Young? 22 apiece, and Vince has two picks already in this game. Right now, and the right tackle over there jumped. Blaylock pulled out early. Before the snap, ball start. Number 63 in the offense. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Still first down. Now we asked Vince uh, when he decides to run with the ball. Right now I'm just playing the game of football and trying to just re, uh, rely on my offensive line, give me my time to sit back there and go to my one, two, or three receiver. And, and then if not, then I'll tuck it down and make something happen. Yeah, a lot of folks uh, viewed that as a work in progress. Vince Young staying in the pocket like he did right there. Incomplete. And a first and ten into the right zone. What a run by Taylor after the catch. Well, you can see the maturity of a quarterback right on that one. The halfback kind of goes short. The linebackers bite on it. This is passing 101. Watch this. Guy comes right here and circles. Watch the linebackers. Saldi right here, right there. Jump on the running back. And then comes the crossing around right behind it. That's passing 101. Circle one guy underneath. Bring the passing. This crossing route behind. Without a huddle, Charles, the freshman, one to beat to the 10. Just short of a first and ten, Dwayne Slay saves it, and Charles a little gimpy. 
as he comes off to the sideline right now. So Selvin Young will re-enter the game for the injured freshman. Came in tweaky into the game. Miss practiced very well on Thursday, and you see it one tackle, and it gets tweaky again. Second down and one. Junior from Houston. Running as well as he has at any time since the major surgery. Brent, we talked about it in the open. So many ways that Texas can attack you. Two running backs, a great tight end, different receivers punt returns they've got a very balanced football team one of the best football teams Texas I've seen in a long long time has had a flag uh, was it a celebration yep on sportsman like must have been a dead ball so that's what you would assume it's the zone read Vince Young stays patient gives it to Selvin Young gets into the end zone France is in after the play unsportsmanlike conduct on the I'm scoring team. Yet. The 15-yard penalty from the kickoff. That will help the Red Raiders no end with field position Yes. after that score. Texas Tech has the option of taking that penalty there or on the field goal. They've taken the option of taking it on the, on the extra point or the kickoff. They're going to take it on the kickoff. We played... Uh, by my unofficial count, a little over an hour, a couple minutes over an hour, nine minutes to go in the second quarter, moving a little bit quicker than you might have expected here. And that's good news for everybody. Pino. Tacks on the extra point. So a run for the Roses is well underway here. Welcome back to our BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. As we approach the top of the hour with Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda, I'm Brett Musburger. 17-10, showdown in the Big 12 South. A battle of two of the unbeatens, both ranked in the top 10 in the BCS rankings. Reyes to punt it. And Juan Cosby fumbled, tries to get it off blocked. Out of bounds, Texas ball. It was not an accurate snap. Michael Griffin is the young man who came in and blocked it. Watch how he moved to his right. He thought he was going to go to the left because he had his two gunners on the left side of the field that threw him off. See how it took him off? Then he just drops the ball, and it's shades of bad things happening. Try to get it off, but it's too late. But he felt that snap was going to go to his left because both gunners were to his left and the center snapped it in the wrong direction. Selvin Young continues at running back with Jamal Charles having re-injured his left ankle. There's the screen to the outside and Carter, Brian Carter, the senior, steps out of bounds at the 16. Jack? Let's update you on Jamal Charles's condition. It is the same ankle, Brent, that he's been working with throughout the course of the last couple of games. He's been trying to battle back from it. So what they've done is they've re-taped it, taped it inside the shoe and outside the shoe. He's got a brace on it. They say he's ready to come back and play. And Jack, his substitute, Selvin Young, scored the go-ahead touchdown. He's out there blocking for Benson, who's throwing in zone. Touchdown! A beautiful running catch by Billy Pittman. The block cut leads to a Texas touchdown. Biggest lead of the game. It, it, this is just from the quarterback watching the quarterback. I'm in awe of that. I'll tell you, his footwork, that's like a quick jump shooter. He, he got that off so quickly. He didn't have to set his feet at all. We'll show you. David Pino. Tax on the extra point. Two touchdown advantage for the Horns. What? 
watch Vince come out to his left. You can see it to the outside. He throws it kind of sidearm. He likes to throw that when he drops it right in the basket on the run. His feet barely set on a play, and he just flicks it out there, going one way and flicks it. You, it's unteachable. And a big old guy like that that can wing it has that kind of touch on the run. Watch his feet. He doesn't even step forward. Kind of backs up like Brett Favre. And, you know, he kind of warms up like this. We caught him in practice here. This is before the game. Warming up. Watch how he just flicks that ball. He does this a lot. Just throws the ball without stepping. And when he has to on the blitz, he just lets it go. Does it quickly, too, partner. Yep. 11 seconds. Two plays wow. and 23. Hey, you know, uh, I think Mike Leach is going to say, I told you we shouldn't have punted. <laughs> Hate those punts. <laughs> Matt Mike would like to get one back here. What a special talent. What a special talent Vincent Young is. Johnson. Kick off his field. Woods has it. And barely gets back to the 20-yard uh, line. Jack uh, Pittman on a nice run out with that score. Yeah, and just consider this, Brett. Last uh, last season at this exact time, Billy Pittman was contemplating quitting the game of football. He was beset with injuries, and then all of a sudden he developed Bell's palsy. Then just as quickly as it arrived, it subsided a month later. I think maybe part of it is Billy's grandmother's luck has rubbed off on him. His grandmother, Gwen Kelly, won $1.5 million in the Texas lottery three years ago. <laughs> yeah, there's a big lottery winner this week in Powerball out in Oregon. Well, a couple, more pa couple more passes from Vince. There's going to be a $13 million lottery for Texas. <laughs> First down and 10. Short drop. Lost the high pass. And falling down with the catch Beautiful. at the 39-yard line is the former quarter. No, that's Joe Falani down there. Let me check that. Joe Falani, the junior from Phoenix. Beautiful body control. Now, let's talk about this defense and what you have to do when you're going against this type of team. First of all, align properly. These are the absolutes. Communicate. Tell everybody what you're doing. Substitute freely. There's a lot of plays, a lot of running. Lessen the quarterback's pre-snap confidence. Move around. Mix man-to-man -man and zone. Penetrate up front. Pressure the quarterback, of course. And then don't forget, you got to tackle, be physical, and then stay composed. They're going to hit some plays on you. Trying to do just that and does. For a first down across midfield. And that's Olamua. You know, I've talked about this a lot, Brent. Uh, maybe the last three years of doing football games, as more and more teams are running this spread offense and quarterbacks and receivers are getting better at pitching and catching the ball, you have to have a different mindset on defense. You can't get upset if they hit a, a few against you. It's like a basketball player. You play good defense, you put the hand up. If he makes it, you run down the court and play basketball. That's the same with football. You line up again and try to make the next play. And that's what the Horns are doing right here. Just lining up and waiting gets it off to Henderson angles down that sideline you know Priest Holmes is one of the uh, you know you think of Ricky Williams who was held yep. to minus one yard last night for the uh, for the Dolphins. Priest Holmes is often overlooked when you talk you know, about great running backs. Sure, come out of you know, and, and I remember Priest when he played here at, at Texas he's earned every snap of his NFL career through hard work and making himself a better football player. When you watch him in practice up there it's interesting like all the great ones at the end of the play he keeps going for another 20 yeah. 25 yards you know you see that and, and that just helps pick the rest of your team up. Now, Tex Texas Tech right now, this is their best drive, of the, I think. They really, really are focused in on, on running the ball, making plays, screens, quarterback plays, passes. They've done everything on this drive so far. Second down for Cody. He's going to take it off. Got the first down to the 20-yard line. The Red Raiders may get one back here. They may get two back. 5.20 to go yeah. and a half. Those yards are climbing very quickly. <laughs> He's over 218 total yards. There's so many different ways to be balanced if you're throwing the football. You don't have to have a lot of rushing yards. 
You can have screen yards, wide receiver screen yards, quarterback runs. There's a lot of different ways to move the football. He waited as long as he could, though, and got rid of the ball and avoided the sack. He's tough, isn't he? Yes, he he is. is tough. And Mike Leach whispering play over there on the far side. Bunch of different looks from that Texas secondary. This time they're going to have a zone blitz inside. Two people coming in. It's zone coverage behind it. That's uh, Gene Chizik's style. He loves to bring linebackers, but plays zone behind it. You got guys wide open like that but no time to throw the football to him. Hicks is far out to the left. Watson is slammed. And I mean, unloading is Eric Hall, number 49. That, that was uh, two trains on the same track that time. That's not good. You got to make sure the track is clean. Wide receiver screen and Zoop coming right on the same track, right into him for the tackle. Got to live with those calls. You make a wide receiver screen. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. The Red Raiders need a play here. comes the blitz and Henderson on a run against it up the middle inside the five yard line the perfect call the blitz came late and Henderson exploded up the middle see Texas tried to disguise and I think this is called play right here an audible call to play Mike doesn't make a lot of running calls but with the three-man line that we showed you you can see they checked into this play and caught him trying to disguise against the three-man front they're so spread out Perfect call by Cody Hodges. 18 yards on third and 11. First and goal for Hodges and the Red Raiders. Anderson won't get there this time. Lost yards on that play. As Michael Griffin, who blocked the punt leading to a touchdown, makes the stop. Huff and Griffin run so well. They're comfortable whether they have to cover a receiver man-to-man -man or come up and stop the running game. Hicks is out to the left. Falani is there, too. Avendola, three wide to the left. Second down, deflected, intercepted on the ricochet. Picking it off is Tim Crowder, the junior from Tyler, Texas, on the ricochet throw by Hodges. Aaron Harris, number two, Brent, made the play, the middle linebacker. He moved up in the line of scrimmage, and Cody Hodges lost him. And then when he dropped back on the crossing routes, number two makes the play. You'll see the crossing routes coming over. And then Aaron Harris, number two, just gets his hand on it right there. Actually, I don't know if that, did that hit the umpire? That might have hit the umpire. I thought it was Aaron Harris on the play, but his bet, he reached back and got it. But now I'm wondering if it did hit the umpire on the play. Because Cody Hodges was upset. Remember he turned around yelling? I'm wondering if that hit the umpire. Ball is at the 12-yard line. 246. And Texas Tech also has had a blocked punt in this game. So incomplete. Let's take one more look at it now, Gary, and let's see if it is Harris or the umpire. Okay, here's the umpire right here. Oh, right there, okay. Got his X right there around him. Harris goes by. I thought he reached back and got it. Oh, it hits Harris right in the head. It hits Harris right in the head on the play. <laughs> the umpire was dodging the ball at the time. Okay, yeah, that is very good homework, and I've been doing this. Charles is back on the field. The freshman breaks free to the 31-yard line. So the retaping job that Jack Aroo told you about worked on Charles. Pittman 
Pittman to the 25, to the 21 yard line. One handed stab of a fastball from Vince Young. Dwayne Slade thought he had an interception, and Pittman sticks up his mitt and grabs it, bobbles it, and catches it with one hand. Watch right here. Slade thinks he's got the interception on the crossing route, and Pittman sticks up the mitt and gets it. Slade goes, I got it. Oh, my. It's coming right to Pittman, and he turns it upfield. A 48-yard gain and a timeout called by the Red Raiders. First down and 10. Offensive line gives Young time, going to go to Sweet. Interference on this. This is going to be nullified. The field judge threw the flag in the end zone. There was pushing. Now Slay was involved. He made the interception. And let's see who was pushing down there. It was Nazi Rudin, number 26. It was his fate. It was a stutter and go to the outside to Sweet on the play. Nazi did a good job on it. Slay came over the middle, free safety on the play and did it. Watch this, a little stutter coming down. Good read right there. And as he comes up, Rudin cuts him off with the balls in the air. That would have been a perfect technique had the ball not been in the air, but you can see the official says balls in the air, that's interference. So an automatic first down. Ball set down at the uh, seven yard line and it'll be first down and goal. Selvin Young up the middle looking for another touchdown got it man what a powerful running show number 22 is putting on here today we talked about turning the field upside down quick huh Tech's in there looking for a touchdown. All of a sudden, it goes the opposite way. Gary, the last four possessions, the Hornets have four touchdowns. <laughs> I'll tell you, Vince Young is so calm. I don't know if I've ever seen that calm of an athlete in a long time out on the football field. 475 yards of total offense already. We could be headed for 1,000 inside of two minutes. And the Horns are hooking them right now. 31-10. Fielded by Woods. There is another penalty. So the yellow continues to fly on this game. And we have had five penalties against the Red Raiders already in this game. For 38 yards, two against Texas. Six and a glance at the uh, last four possession. Quickly eight yards. Driven 80, 23, and 88. A lot of different weapons on this Texas football team. Close to the first down marker on that ball carrier and Michael Griffin again. Michael and Marcus, the Griffin twins from right here in Austin, out of Bowie High School. Kind of a double-edged sword here for Mike Leach. He really does not right now, his team is really reeling, want to give that ball back to Vince Young again. Going deep. So a minute and a half. The comparison. Remember now, Vince Young, he struggled a little bit at the beginning of this game with those uh, two interceptions. But uh, starting to come on now. Seven of 12 overall in this game. 
And remember, Cody Hodges threw for 600 plus yards last week against Kansas State. That's a win, 152 yards. Texas has held them in this football game. And here is Henderson. Good looking running. Back. Sure is. He's been for a long time, too. A lot of space on the field, though, when you run draws for Texas Tech. Right now, I think Texas was the like to give up those draw plays. They're playing the clock here with a minute and 10 seconds or so to go in the first half. Linebackers are coming. Oh, he had him wide open in the middle of the field on the blitz and just overthrew Henderson a tad. Yeah, it was a gimmick play. The wide receivers faked wide receiver screen it was a delay all the way to Henderson it would have been a touchdown had he completed the ball watch it faking the screen out here everybody blocks and Henderson just sneaks out right over the middle it would have been wide open right here for a touchdown see it wide receiver screen to the bottom no one in the middle of the field catch the perfect defense on I, third and short they put a score I wonder if they're gonna try the hard count here fourth and one with plenty of time for Vince Young and this horn offense. No, they're going to go for it. They've got to hit this one. And they do for a first down. You talk about rolling the dice. Man, that was unbelievable. And they put the ball in the hands of Amendola. Don't see that a lot, but I guess wherever you give the ball to Vince Young right now would be tough, so you might as well go for it. You get a punt block. The guy doesn't like to go for punts on fourth down anymore. <laughs> He's had enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's first and ten. Cody trying to get the ball downfield. Can't find a receiver clearing. And the clock continues to run. Tracking him down was Brian Robinson. Robinson is one of those defensive end linebacker type players that plays on the outside. Sometimes he drops, sometimes he doesn't, but you can see he ran down Cody on that play. So, Tech uses its final timeout here in the first half. And see it. No. There were players open in the middle of the field that time, but Cody couldn't, Hodges could not find him, came to the outside, thought he had the corner, but uh, just not enough speed against that outstanding Texas defensive and linebacker type on the play. Now remember, Texas has timeouts left also. Two timeouts, so they could force one more punt if they stopped them. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Brent, as we watch Cody Hodges, we want to give a shout out to his dad. His dad was in the stands at the Nebraska game, and he had 100% arterial blockage. When he got back to Texas, they operated on him and inserted stints, the same ones that went into our vice president, Dick Cheney, a couple of uh, months ago. And believe it or not, I talked to Cody before the game. He's doing well, and he's sitting here in the stands watching his son, hoping to see if he can convert this one. And, uh... You know, you wish it nothing but the best, don't you, Jack? We've got 30 seconds to go. 31-10. The Horns build an advantage. Hicks short of the first down. Be just, third down and short. And that clock will continue to move. And just throw it to a spot out there. All the receivers know when you run your out, be ready to come back to the ball and... Hodges just flicks it out to the outside and says, go get it. Time for a couple more if they hurt. That'll stop the clock if he goes down. One second. Amadola takes it out of bounds on the far side. So here comes the last play. Now you'd wonder if they go the bunch to the end zone and try to pop the ball up in the air and get a, a, a cheap one at the end of the half. Five hundred yards of offense here in the first half. The Horns will use a timeout. Second quarter slowed down a little bit. It's at twenty past the hour right now. So our BCS standings, presented by uh, Allstate, and of course the Texas Longhorns sitting there in the number two spot. I, I think I read this week the USC and Texas there that. Never have the first two teams in the first set of standings met in the championship yeah. game. So we'll see what happens. Virginia Tech, of course, uh, with a major portion of its 
toughest schedule still coming up. Georgia with a win today, although Arkansas made a battle. Alabama, big game against Tennessee. LSU with one loss sitting six. They're the Red Raiders. Miami with a loss and unbeaten UCLA. And there's Penn State. We'll see Penn State I, next I, week. I think the team that came farthest from behind to win was Ohio State. Started on the first BCS poll at sixth and went all the way up to the championship game. I think you're right. They beat Miami in that overtime right. game over in the uh, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. John Junker, the, uh, the fellow who uh, put that show on the road, is here watching this game, scouting a couple of teams. You know, if uh, if Texas, if something should happen and they win the Big 12, and uh, they would be interested, obviously, it's an automatic for the Big 12 champion. And, uh, you know, Benny, our crack researcher just called in from New York there. He said we overlooked LSU, but oh, they yeah. came from number 12. That was that co-championship year, wasn't it? First time <laughs> in 10. And Can't Hodges run. on the Can't last run. play is not going to make the end zone. Maybe I spoke too quickly. Put on a good effort. The defense had a shot at the quarterback, and they hogtied that rascal at the 15-yard uh, line. Michael Griffin again. Number 27, so Cody Hodges and the Red Raiders head off a disappointing first half for them. They trail 31-10. They could put only one touchdown on the board. We check in with Jack. Coach, some self-inflicted wounds in that first yeah, half. Yeah, we squandered too many plays and uh, just made some, uh, did some dumb things and some bad things that hurt us. Will you make any changes or will you just kind of get talk these guys back into being a little more focused? Wow. I think there's that, but I think that, uh, 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 you know, we got to figure out how to punt the ball, too, so we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Coach. Bad <laughs> <laughs> Mike, as they tried to figure out how to punt the ball and all of those things. Longhorns with a 21-point advantage. Uh, what do you do if you're the Red Raiders? One at a time, but uh, it's, I it's don't know. I don't know. Here you go. 60, 51, 51, 45, 42. That's how many points Texas has scored in their games. Ohio State held them to 25, 31 points in the first half. Unbelievable. They only had two third downs. Two One third two. downs. <laughs> <laughs> and remember now the Red Raiders, they took the ball after winning the opening coin flip. And so here to start the second half, the Horns will have the first possession. Wait, let me say that one more time. Two third downs <laughs> and 31 points. <laughs> you know, uh, Gary, that second quarter punt block was Texas' 35th block kick since 2000. And uh, this one will come out on the uh, on the 20. What's out of whack here as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary from can, the first half? And there you can see over 500 yards of yeah, offense. Yeah, you can see it. And we talked about this. One for two on third downs for Texas. The team has 31 points, but... Out of whack for Texas Tech is they put a lot of yards up there, but they did not transfer it to points, and that's because they made mistakes when they got into situations to do it. So first and ten for Vince Young. Selvin Young. Big hole, and Selvin enjoying perhaps his best game. Since uh, that knee surgery of a year ago. And uh, uh, Jack, uh, is Mac uh, nervous about this second half? Well, a little bit, Brent. And what he talked to his team about is something that Gary Danielson doesn't believe in about momentum. He said, said he spent a lot of time talking about the momentum. And he said what he was going to do is what we're about to see. He's going to go to a no huddle, try to use it in this quarter, because he said that's what got the momentum for us. Well, that's interesting. Pick up that tempo a little bit, second down. Selvin tries to stretch it out. And. Uh, the Red Raiders were ready defensively. Cherry, number 84, makes the stop. There we go. We finally wild a wax stat. 54 plays, 10 points. 31 plays, 31. That's nice. Uh, and, and Brent, I believe in momentum. The, the Titanic was in momentum when it hit that iceberg. <laughs> Couldn't stop. I'll tell you what I do believe in. Number 10. You have that guy, you have a chance of having good momentum on your football team. Don't push me after the move. Third down and five. Charles slips out of the receiver. Young's got a wide open touchdown. Pittman to the end zone. Won't get him. 75 yards. The route is underway. The run for the Roses is in full flower here. Can 
kick a ball like this 40 yards downfield, basically like handing off the baton on a track meet, and you have that many sprinters for Texas, this sheriff for uh, Texas is some quarterback. Indeed he is. Making it 37-10. <laughs> I hate to say it, but Vince was given the Heisman pose as he came to the sideline. Yes. Pino uh, just kind of flicks it off, releases that back leg through his throw, sees Pittman, and uh, he just knows it's a touchdown, and then he just looks up his teammates and said, uh-huh, 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 big fella. That offensive line, Blaylock, number 63, helping out. Yes, and remember in that also is a wide receiver screens and the screens inside to Henderson. So that's what you have to have. You have to be able to catch the ball and run. Not a lot of deep throws in this offense for Tim. Drops it off to Henderson. Out at the uh, 10 yard line. Second down and short. And uh, here's Henderson stepping to the right. Got a first down. It'll be first and goal. You know, you find yourself when you're looking at Texas or, uh, or USC, you really find yourself hoping that those two teams come together in the Rose Bowl. It would be some matchup. By now, it's first and goal. Incomplete. And, uh, just intended for Falani. I just bobbled that football. And that's what threw off the timing on the quick screen. So we're at the top of the hour. Two unbeatens and one of them in serious trouble. Texas Tech trailing Texas 38 to 10. Uh, with Jack Arood and Gary Danielson. I'm Brett Musburger here in Austin, Texas on an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day. You know, one of the things that uh, I think is overlooked, Gary, probably has not received enough credit for Putting the show on the uh, road here is the athletic director of Texas, Delos Dodds. Uh, what a great all-around athletic program. Not just football, but basketball under Rick Barnes, women's basketball. Here the home defense hits Cody. Touchdown! Falani comes free at the last moment over there. Joel Falani, the junior from Phoenix, for the score. <laughs> just buys a little time on this play he knows they're coming after him texas tried to attack the gaps then the last second with killebrew in there he just lay gives ground and then throws it out to the outside now you do not think that it's a change of momentum right well, I, I don't know texas i thought had the momentum how could texas tech have scored if the other team had the momentum i don't get it <laughs> what are you supposed to do give up the other team has the momentum <laughs> <laughs> That's the <extra laughs> point. Momentum, folks, will be the football in Vince Young's right you hand. Got it. That's what I think. Back. <laughs> it's his turn again after the uh, kickoff return. Team takes care of a little business here. We'll see number 10 back on the field. So certainly around the country, all those straw poles and everything, they've got him one of the one of the three favorites. I don't think there's much question but that Reggie Bush at USC has opened up a lead. Ball is juggled down there by Cosby. Regains control. And on the delay makes it all the way to the 34-yard uh, line. Let's go back to that touchdown, Gary. Pass protection rules for Texas Tech is if there's a man inside of you, you block down. If you're the tackle, you block down. You force the outside guy to come in on the outside of the play. Watch it. Very simple rules. Center goes to his left. Everyone blocks down. You turn number 40, Killebrew loose. You buy the time and make sure the quarterback gets rid of the ball. Cody Hodges is cramping up on the sidelines, and that's just one of many, many hits he's taken today. It kind of adds up. There he is receiving treatment over on the far side. Young fires complete. And a first down as uh, he puts it into Cosby's hands. And... Uh, Jack, uh, it appears to be nothing more serious than cramps, right? Well, but cramps can be serious in this kind of heat, Brent, especially this early in the second half. What's happened is both of Cody's calves have cramped up. Now they tried to get some fluids like Pedialyte into his body, but so far they're really having to work a lot harder. 
Trailers, I mean, trainers tell me that in this 70 degree plus heat, cramps are hard to escape. First out of 10. Doesn't seem like it's been that hot out of 10. Vince keeps it for a first down to the 40 yard line. And that's the read, that's the zone read play. Vince Young has been very, very patient, not forcing the keep on this. He has the option of handing this ball off to the running back, Charles, on this play, or keeping it and running the opposite direction. That time he saw it, took it, and showed why he's so tough to defense. Scott, Stuttered, Senline, Allen, Blaylock, the offensive line, a veteran group, a couple of seniors. Scott at that tackle spot. And we ask Jonathan Scott on whether Vince Young makes his job any different. Vince is known to make plays. So, you know, Vince can be anywhere on the field. So I, I think he makes you a better player because you want, you, you're going to have to work even harder. I mean, there's times where you're going to have to go downfield and block for him. He'll be a very high draft choice. A very talented left tackle. 6-7. Great frame for a tackle. Second down. Charles, the freshman, trying to slash over behind him, and not much daylight that time. Jammed up pretty good by the uh, Red Raiders, and uh, and it will move to uh, third down. One of the very few blitzes that Texas Tech has used in the game. That time they came with a seven-man blitz, and it worked. You all right? I'm right here. Young is just playing at too high of a level. He, he's actually too good for college football right now. He just has all the ability to do all the different things. Matt, I don't know if Matt the college Brown defense does not can, want you I don't say work that. for Mac Brown. <laughs> 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 that was as good a throw as you could make, and he's made about 15 of them in his football game. Uh, Jack, a little war of attrition going on down there. Huh? Well, yeah, Brent, you know, we were, you were questioning with the 70, mid-70 degrees, why guys are falling to cramps. Well, all of a sudden now Aaron Harris on the Texas side has dropped to dehydration. They have taken him into the locker room. You know, that usually means putting fluids intravenously into him. I think one of the problems is there's not a lot of wind, and when the sun is shining down on the field, which it did throughout the first half and now on the Texas Tech Red Raiders sidelines, it feels a lot hotter, and when you're giving your all out on the gridiron, it will sap your energy. I think it's one of the reasons why Texas tends to practice in that inflatable dome during the week, as we saw on Thursday. Yeah, there's no question, Jack, that that's why they do that. And you know that far side, that's why they keep the visiting team over there, too. And uh, here is our drive summary presented by Drive Insurance from Progressive. You yeah. can see following the field goal, those two picks, and then look at what has happened since. You know what else the Texas hasn't done today? They haven't punted. That is amazing. You know, uh, Mac Brown might be telling Vince he needs to come back, but every quarterback recruit in the country is telling him he's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how I feel about quarterbacks. Yeah. Running backs, I think, fine. Yeah. Quarterbacks stay in school. Uh, to turn down that uh, money, you, you always put me on a spot like this. I'll turn the table. <laughs> if somebody was going to give him try, forty, just try. If somebody was going to give him forty million as a number one or two draft pick in the draft, would you tell him to come back and work on his college game? Who was the second pick this year in the draft? You I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I just I, know what quarterbacks make at the top of the draft, and it'll be forty to forty-five million dollars. Now, why did Matt Leiner come back? Well, I have my theories on it, but uh, <laughs> I, he was injured. He had maybe a bad like, elbow. Maybe, maybe you'd like to share him with the audience. Yeah. So you're going to keep him quiet, quarterback. Oh, I got to get out of the way of this play first. And <laughs> yeah, that's Selvin Young. And still battling. What a performance today by Selvin Young. Two touchdowns, putting 70 up on the board. This is just a... A great performance by the veteran coming off that major, major surgery. We and, spoke about. and what a great call by Mac Brown to start him. We discussed this with Mac Brown as you watch Selvin Young on right side of your screen, number 22, right over there, going to run, get hit, and spin. And we said, are you going to go back to Charles? He's had such a great breakout time for you. He says, 
hey, what am I going to do? Selvin has practiced hard. He's been ready to play. If I start Charles, I may lose this kid. I want to play this kid first. I can always go to Charles. That's coaching. Yeah, Mac uh, runs his domain very, very well down here. No one in the country recruits any better. Of course, this is one of the most prolific uh, football hotbeds in the the United States down here in the state yeah, of Texas. They threw, threw a flag there at the yeah, end of the that. End. There must have been some you see jostling. That on the yard line? Yeah, must have been some extracurriculars there after the uh, timeout was called. How many Division One players did Mac Brown say he were in Texas? He said there were three over 300 Division One scholarship football players in the state of Texas last year, and of course he can only give 25 scholarships max. And, and max, and then, what did he say to us? The other 275 mamas and daddies are mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Texas Tech has exhausted its timeouts. They just used the last one with 532 to go in the third quarter. Wow. Stutter has come on over to the sidelines uh, after the timeout. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense and again on the defense. They offset. It's still third down after the timeout. So I guess I didn't get an answer to my question, huh? If he gets $45 million for be the first and second draft pick, you'd tell him to come back? Well, if you can guarantee me that $40 million awaits one or two. Yes, uh, that's 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 what I'm guaranteeing. If, say, if he calls and says, yeah, you're one or two in the draft, what do you tell him to do? If it's 40 million, you got to go. <laughs> okay, we're in agreement here. <laughs> <laughs> but if you stay one more year, you're you're a lock and a Heisman and a number one and a big Nike contract and all that good stuff. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Henry Melton. He scored a touchdown earlier. This time he picks up the first down. Make it first and goal. 38-17. You know who hasn't been in the game so far is David Thomas, the tight end in this game so far. He's usually one of those guys they go to. He's in the football game. Tight end, but uh, has not gone to him all game. There's someone young. This time he lost yardage on the play. Second down. No freshman Charles back in the game. Here's David Thomas right there, the tight end. He is usually a go-to guy, but so far in this football game, he has not gotten a pass even his way. And threw on the other side of him. So Cosby was breaking it to the right. And uh, Vince wanted him to uh, come back yeah. in. Let me check. That was Billy Pittman yeah. over there. Pittman thought was playing it's called the wheel route you get near the sideline and then if you don't get the ball you turn up it's somewhat of a read that time Pittman thought he didn't get the ball so he turned up Vince said I still got more time to hit you on the first half of the wheel and that's why the miscommunication yeah on that first spoke they could have had him yep, if he had turned out he spoke. was wide open <laughs> could have had him on the spoke <laughs> Very surprised they don't go to the tight end. Nobody in the middle of the football field. So Vince says, I'll take the middle. Touchdown. <laughs> what a weapon. Last six possessions, six touchdowns for Texas. Sometimes I take quarterbacks that scramble a lot with a little bit of a grain of salt. I mean, did you scramble when there was a play available and you just ran because you didn't know what you're doing? Vince Young knows what he's doing, and he scrambles when he has to. That's why he's the ultimate weapon right now in college football. And the extra point is tacked on by David Pino. Welcome back to the BCS Spotlight Game, presented by ADT, and the spotlight shining ever so brightly on these Texas Longhorns. They're ranked number two in hot pursuit of USC, 
the BCS championship game will be played in the Rose Bowl this year. Complete to the 22-yard uh, line, Robert Johnson. What? Here is our Dr. Pepper Big 12 update, and Missouri with a chance now to capture the North title. Texas A&M, speaking of the Aggies, they rally, beat Kansas State by two. Iowa State, they're still in the running, too. Colorado will go later against Kansas. So that's a pretty wide-open chase with that loss by Nebraska against Missouri. Henderson put it down. And it is first and ten for the Horns. There is Griffin recovering the ball. Michael Griffin comes up with this one. Yeah, this is another one of those plays, though. Texas Tech can't be playing this type of football game. Caused and gotten by the same guy. Yep. Michael Griffin caused it. Bounced right back to him, and he fell on it. You know, interestingly, when we talked to Gene Chis Chiswick, the defensive coordinator, he said, our goal is to get 80% of what happened before. And that's right where they're at in this football game. Yeah, Vince's still out there. That's why I don't coach for $2 million a year, I guess, right? <laughs> Handing it off. And uh, now they're starting to bring in the uh, the substitutes here. As Obanaya, the redshirt freshman from Missouri City, Texas. You look at the difference. That's that defense. And remember, we talked to Gene. He said, we'd like to hold them to 80% of their yearly average well 80 percent of their yearly average would be 458 and they're at 447 that's a pretty good call isn't it yep that's the backup quarterback there who was talking to cody that's harold well, he didn't have his helmet on either 640 to go Missouri City, Texas, takes it 22 yards. Well, not much can happen to your quarterback when you're just handing off isolation plays right here. This ball just bounced outside. That offensive line does a good job of cleaning it. And another one of those Texas recruits hiding on the bench. Guys all over this bench and football team that are very, very talented. David Pino. <laughs> and it's 52-17. Nordgren has replaced Vince Young. So Vince Young's workday is finished. 12 of 22, 239, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He also ran seven times for 45 yards and another touchdown. So the Heisman Trophy candidate takes a seat. And the senior from Dallas, Matt Nordgren, who holds for the place kicks, hands it off to number three, Amaya. The redshirt freshman who moments ago scored his first touchdown of the season, 22 yards. Anbaraya took it. And here on Nordgren, you can see seventh game. He's thrown only seven passes. Uh, in his final year, a very capable holder for Pino on the, uh, on the kicking team. And it will be second down with 3.28 to go before Texas moves officially to 7-0. This was the first time that they have done that under Mac Brown. Pounding straight ahead with the big fella Henry Melton, the 270-pound running back. Mac has made a program here. He finally has a quarterback, a player, that wins big games for him and Vince Young. And I think that's the little difference right here of why this team, the Rose Bowl last year, and why Mac is winning those big games now. Here's Melton again, and Gary I suck at that. And all of us here, and we'd like to thank both of the sports information directors who've helped us. Chris Cook, of Lubbock Way at Texas Tech, does a fine job, and John Bianco from the University of Texas. It's always great to uh, come here to Austin, Texas, 
Well, we talked about what Texas had to do in the game plan, and that was stay balanced, and they did do that. They ran for 200 yards, threw for 200 yards, tackle, and, and you know, that has been, that tackle, that is more than just sacks. I mean, they have been all over the football field hitting players, and that is measured in yak yards because even though Texas Tech has tried to put the screens on them and do different things, there has not been a lot of space. Pretty complete oh, football game. what a hit by the big fella. Jared Williams coming in, but I think Dwayne Slay was also in there along with Williams and uh, Mac Brown taking the air out on fourth down. Just uh, ran it right straight ahead with Melton just to keep working on the clock. <laughs> We're inside of two minutes here. That was a decleater. That one knocked him mm. right off his cleats on that one, right Whoa. in midair. And no switch at quarterback from Texas Tech. I mean, one of the things that you will have to say about, you know, Cody Hodges, he's waited five years to play here. He's a fifth-year senior. Maybe Mike Leach says, you know, Harold, you're going to have a lot of time to play. We're going to let Cody have all the snaps. Like the screen is dropped. I don't believe that was a lateral. No, nope. uh, it was incomplete. There's the signal from the official. I didn't think he threw it behind it. Now, a lot of fellows now seeing some playing time on both sides of the balls we bring down the curtain on what has to be a very disappointing performance I'm sure that in the back of the uh, Texas Tech fans mind okay we could lose over in Austin but uh, let's go down with guns blazing let's let's come on and impress everybody and this has not been an impressive performance unfortunately for them however I think it will be quickly forgotten if they can finish the season the right way You know, if I was a Texas Tech fan, I would say, okay, Texas got a special team this year. I mean, we're better, but Texas is better, too, than what we played in the past. Let's see if we can finish off this season. One loss, that would be an extremely successful season for Texas Tech. Well, here's our Chevrolet players of the game. Now, obviously, we could go with number 10, but Selvin Young of Texas, the best performance yet since that major knee surgery. And Torian Henderson, the powerful running back from Texas Tech, in a recognition of their effort, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Coming in number eight, Joel Falani. And uh, Falani against many of the uh, third unit defenders uh, nearly at midfield. And if you're, used, if you're used to watching a Mike Leach offense, that's what it usually looks like. Five or six yard throw catch it go another 15 18 yards and there's space all over the football field that's why texas did such a great job of knowing their assignments remember we went those 10 absolutes early in the game texas did it just perfectly they aligned all day they communicated they tackled they really followed the game plan so there will be a uh, shake up in at least part of the bcs rankings texas tech came in number seven They'll be in a free fall after this uh, loss. 52 17. That would allow if they win Miami. Of course, they're off. That game was postponed. You would expect them to slip up. LSU has got that tough game tonight against Auburn. To stay in that sixth spot, they're going to have to win. Southern Cal and Texas, of course, will still be running 1 2. From behind, sacked again for the sixth time in this game. Eric Hall takes him down. So the Longhorns have won again. Once again, final score, 52-17. The Horns, this has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. So long, everybody.